All right, kiddos, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about elements. We're going to talk about some element symbols. We'll also talk about the periodic table and how the periodic table um, is divided up into metals, non-metals, and something called metalloids, and we're going to give examples of each. So elements are pure substances. Remember we said that elements and compounds are pure substances. Elements are pure substances that cannot be separated into something that's simpler. There are 92 elements that occur in nature. Several others have been created synthetically. The name and symbols of the elements are universally accepted by scientists in order to make communication of chemical information possible. In this class, there are about 55 element names and symbols that you need to memorize for this class. They're listed towards the front of this manual. So let me show those to you quickly. Um, we're going to go to page 3 here in my manual, and you will see that there are about 55 elements that um, I expect you to learn the properly spelled name and the proper chemical symbol for each of these elements and, and we'll be quizzed on these. So once again those are behind your periodic table towards the front of your manual. Let's go back to where we were now. Um, Eleven of the elements have symbols that are derived from a name other than the English name. So you might think that the symbol has nothing at all to do with the name of the element but you'll see that's not true. They're usually derived from a Latin name. These are common elements, and they are among the list of 55 that need to be learned. The elements and the origin of their names are given here. So, for instance, um, the element iron, the symbol comes from the Latin name for iron, ferrum. So the symbol is F-E. You'll notice that the first letter is always uppercase, and the second letter, if there is one in the element symbol, is always a lowercase letter. Copper comes from the Latin name cuprum. Its symbol is C-U. Lead, plumbum, is the Latin name. Its symbol is P-B. Tin, a lot of kids want to call the symbol for tin T-I. Don't do that. That's titanium. Uh, the Latin name for tin is stanum. So the symbol for tin is actually S-N. Gold comes from the Latin name aurum and its symbol is A-U, not A-G. A-G is the symbol for silver. Silver's Latin name is Argentum. Once again, that symbol is A-G, not A-U. That's gold. Uh, Mercury, Hydra Argentum. So the symbol for that is H-G. Sodium comes from the Latin name Natrium. Its symbol is N-A. Potassium, its symbol is K. Antimony uh, comes from the Latin name Stibium. Its symbol is SB. And Tungsten um, comes from the German name Wolfram. Its symbol is W. So I've listed these, these 11 purposefully because their symbols uh, really don't have a lot to do with the English version of their name. They come from their Latin or in the case of uh, uh, tungsten, the German uh, derivative of their name. Now, most of the element symbols, kiddos, you actually already know, um, and you probably already know how to spell them, but let's just practice a few of these. Take a look at this chart um, at the bottom of page 8 of your manual and see, without my help, if you could figure out the symbol, if the symbol's missing, or the properly spelled name for the elements that I've given you here. You might surprise yourself as to how many you actually already know. So take a minute and do this. might want to pause the video just for a moment. Okay, let's see how you did. Of course, the symbol for oxygen is O. N is the symbol for nitrogen. N-I-T-R-O-G-E-N. -E symbol for calcium is C-A. B-R is the symbol for the element bromine. B-R-O-M-I-N-E. And of course, the symbol for nickel is N-I. I is the symbol for iodine. I-O-D-I-N-E. The symbol for zinc would be Z-N. 
Mg is the symbol for magnesium. M-A-G-N-E-S-I-U-N. -E Next column, F. Now, F is the symbol for fluorine. However, this is actually commonly misspelled. The symbol F is for, like I said, the element fluorine, and it's spelled F-L-U-O-R-I-N-E. It's fluorine, not flowerine. Okay, uranium. Yeah, you probably got that one. The symbol for uranium is U. S is the symbol for sulfur. That's spelled S-U-L-F-U-R. The symbol for hydrogen is just H. C is the symbol for carbon, C-A-R-B-O-N. The symbol for silicon, you probably got that right, S-I. Of course, it can't be S because that's already used by sulfur. H-E, that's the chemical symbol for helium, H-E-L-I-U-M. And the last one in your chart was aluminum, and the symbol for aluminum is A-L. So how did you do? Yeah, you probably surprised yourself. You actually know how to spell most of these already, and you already know most of their symbols. So it might take a little bit of studying on your part to learn those other elements that are listed um, at the beginning of your manual. All right, let's go on to the next page here and take a look at the periodic table. And I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of the periodic table today. Um, you can see that it's made up of several columns and several rows. Well, those columns are actually called groups or families. So the groups or families on the periodic table are the vertical columns. And so the first group is headed up by hydrogen, the second beryllium, and then the third is by scandium, titanium, vanadium, and so on, till we get all the way over to the 18th group, which is headed up by the element helium. Periods are the horizontal rows. So the horizontal rows on the periodic table are my periods. So, the first period is headed up by hydrogen, the second by lithium, then sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Now, these two rows right here actually fit into periods 6 and 7. So we can't fit all of these elements in this little square right here. So we have a little footnote that says they're down here. So all of these, they're called the lanthanides, all of these fit in this period here, in cesium's period. All of these fit in francium's period. Okay, I'm not going to define what a metal is right now. I'm just going to tell you where they're located on the periodic table. The metals are primarily on the left side of the table. And the nonmetals primarily are on the right side of the table. I said primarily because there is the nonmetal hydrogen that's on the left hand side of the periodic table. That's actually a nonmetal. It is on the, sorry I said right, it's actually on the left side of the periodic table, but it is a nonmetal. The metalloids are located right between the metals and the nonmetals. So the metalloids are between metals and the nonmetals. So let's count them up. How many groups are there on the periodic table? Let's see. We'll number these. Okay. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So there are 18 groups on the periodic table. How many periods are there? Let's count those up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 periods on the periodic table. 
All right, let's draw a thick line that separates the metals from the non-metals. So let's go ahead and change. And what we're going to do is we're going to start right below boron. And we're going to draw a little staircase here. So between aluminum and silicon, silicon and germanium, germanium and arsenic, arsenic and antimony, antimony and tellurium, tellurium and polonium, and polonium and astatine. So that thick line separates the metals from the non-metals. So these guys over here are my non-metals, and along with hydrogen, and then these over here would be my metals. And you can see that there are far more metals on the periodic table than there are non-metals. Is hydrogen a metal or non-metal? I think we've already answered that question. We said it's a non-metal. Now, this thick line that we just drew, it separates the metals from the non-metals, and those elements that border this line, other than aluminum, are considered to be metalloids. So the elements between the metals and the non-metals are the metalloids. So arsenic, silicon, germanium, etc. are considered to be metalloids. All right. Let's just complete this table at the bottom of the, uh, this page of your notes um, by looking at our periodic table. So, um, if I wanted to find the element in group number three, period number four, let's take a look. Group number three, one, two, three, period number four, that would be right here, SC, scandium. So the element is SC. And let's see, it's on the left-hand side of the periodic table, so I would call that a metal. All right, let's try the next one. Xe, xenon, that's the element. So let's find it, then we'll find its group and period number, and we'll figure out if it's a metal, non-metal, or metalloid. Xe, let's see, where are you, Xe? Here it is, Xe, xenon. So it looks like it's in group number 18 and period number 5. Period 5, group 8. Yep, period 5, group 18. So group 18, period number 5. And as you saw, it was on the far right-hand side of the periodic table, way over here. So we're going to call that a non-metal. Okay. And the last one on our list. We have group number 11, period number 6. So group 11, that's so way over here, period number 6. Oh, it's everybody's favorite element. Looks like group 11, period 6 is the element AU. Of course, that's gold. It was on the left side of the table, so that's another metal. Now, we'll be spending a lot more time this year, a lot of time, talking about the periodic table. You will learn that elements that are in the same group have similar chemical properties. That means that lithium reacts similarly with water, let's say, as would cesium. They are similar to each other. You'll learn that members of group 18, the noble gases, are chemically unreactive. They don't react with anything at all. We'll also talk about nicknames for the groups. For instance, we just said that group 18 is called the noble gases. Group 17, they're called the halogens. Group 1, those are called the alkali metals, except for hydrogen, because it's not a metal. And group 2, they're called the alkaline earth metals. So we'll spend a lot more time talking about the periodic table. We'll talk about these numbers, uh, the integers written above the symbol of the element, and then these decimal numbers written below the symbol of the element. So that comes later, so please be patient. Alrighty, hope you enjoyed today's lesson. See you later. Bye-bye.